It's your questions, your thoughts, your comments on today's Locked On Badgers. Connor Seijin, was he done dirty? What's next in the portal? Thoughts on Greg Gard? All that and more today's Locked On Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Lockdown Badgers, your team every single day. Thank you so much for tuning in, as always. Really do appreciate the support. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more new customers join today, and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Lockdown to get started. And I thought we would just have fun and make this the show for from y'all's brains, right? Uh, questions, comments, um, DMs sent to me. Let's just let's just get into it. Um, in no real order, uh, Giuseppe J says, who are the other basketball players that may transfer out? I know some people think Storr may go to the draft, but I have my doubts. Do not think he's ready. Uh, let, let's start with – and Giuseppe, man, thank you for, for the comment as always, my friend. Let's start with um, who are some other players who may transfer out? So I, I, my gut tells me Storr is gone. Um, my gut tells me store is gone. I think Hepburn's going to get offers. I think Hepburn stays. I think you're going to see a bench piece or two leave, uh, just because a they're not being used, and b honestly there might be some real hard discussions this off season. So, uh, who who else may transfer out? I think Blackwell's going to be here. I'm pretty confident of that. I think Winter's going to be here. Crawl's going to be here. I think Klesman's staying. Um, I'd be surprised if Kamari McGee left. I think Chucky Hepburn stays. So I think the bulk of the team stays. I, I really do. Now watch in two days, everybody leaves and this, this looks like a terrible take. But I think most of them are going to stay. People are worried about Chucky Hepburn and it makes sense. I get why they would be. Hepburn would be a great piece on a lot of teams. He could have left last year for a lot of money and he turned it down. He didn't. If he, if he really disliked the program or was looking for greener pastures or disliked guard, he would have left last, last year. I'm telling you that. Unless something drastically changed this year, I think he's back in Madison. Um, and I hope so. I hope he's back in Madison. So I think most of the team's back. It wouldn't surprise me absolutely to see uh, a guy like Ilver, Hodges, you know, players who haven't been able to find their footing. It wouldn't surprise me to see any of those pieces move on to try to find something that works a little bit better for them. Uh, also allows the roster and the team to, to bank in our scholarship. I could see two or three leaving Connor. Um, and may, listen, may, maybe a guy like Winter, maybe a guy like Winter says, I don't want to be back up again for a year. Uh, Kral's going to be here next year. Possibly. No, I'll, I'll say this. Nothing would shock me in recruiting and transfer portal era, but that's kind of my gut feel on it. I don't think there's going to be a mass exodus that other fans seem to think there is. Maybe we'll be wrong. Um, I don't think there will be. In terms of store, I know uh, people may think maybe he goes to the draft, but I have my doubts. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he's ready for the draft. Uh, you go back and you watch, you watch the film against James Madison. You go back and you look at the inconsistent effort all year. We talked about it offensively. He's done a lot of really good things athletically. He he fits a lot of the, what the NBA is looking for. He has good size. The NBA needs wings that play defense, right? The term three and D has become one of the most ubiquitous terms in basketball rosters for a reason you need guys who hit threes and play defense if you don't play defense in the league as a wing you you better be ridiculous offensively and age store is not quite to that point yet so i i don't think he leaves for the nba but i think he could leave for another spot uh this is from kevin k uh if given if he if he had stephen curry on the bench guard would have been wait hold on with given such a little opportunity if steph curry would have played for guard he would have been flipping burgers at mcdonald's listen again this is i literally said this the other day I think we are overestimating the Connor Seagent's game just a little bit, pretending like like guard had Steph Curry on the bench. I I I I like Connor. I like Connor, and I, I I'm rooting for him to have success somewhere. Um, this is the next comment from Kevin K. I hope Connor goes to a team and averages 25 a game, comes back and scores 30 against the Badgers, and makes guard look like a fool. As far as being inconsistent, so is the entire Badgers team. I want to break this up into two parts. So first is. I'm rooting for Connor Seijin. I don't root against people unless you've actively hurt people or done things. Connor, Connor's been a good dude in, in Madison. I've met him once. Um, he was nice. Like he, he's a good, I'm rooting for him to be successful because I want people to be successful. So uh, wherever he goes, I'm not rooting for him to fail because it, it might make the Badgers look better. I hope he crushes it wherever he goes. I mean that honestly, because it doesn't hurt the Badgers if he goes somewhere else and crushes it. It, it doesn't impact the Badgers. So I hope he crushes it. 
Um, in terms of, I hope he comes back and scores 30 against us. Nah, I'm not there. Um, I hope he comes back and we put him in a lot of pick and roll situations. Listen, I'm a Badger fan. Like, I'm rooting for that dude every time he takes the court, except for when he plays plays the Badgers. So, no, I'm I'm not rooting for him to come back and make the Wisconsin look bad. But I, I am rooting for a success, 100%. Uh, Monty D says, Ron, I have a coach to replace guard, TJ Ultiver. Yeah, like the Iowa State coach. Um, he's really good. Obviously, as Iowa State in a great spot this year. Very good recruiter. He's a guy who has a lot of um, – is known nationally as, as a really strong recruiter. Good, good inroads to Wisconsin. I like him. I like him as a coach. He, he has Iowa State, again, playing really well. They play kind of a more uh, faster, more aggressive style. His recruiting is similar to that, um, faster and a little more aggressive. That would be really intriguing in Wisconsin. And I think most people would agree with this. Wisconsin in the national pedigree is a step up from Iowa State. I think most people would agree with that. So that's intriguing, Monty. Um, I obviously a guy a lot of college uh, basketball fans know of and know and follow. So I think he'd be really interesting. I think that would be the type of coach. Listen, that's the type of coach you're looking for if you fire a guard. You're either looking for a lower level coach who has a lot of um, helium, who's really on the come up, or you're looking for a guy like TJ who has proven that he can win in a power situation and has proven he can recruit at a very high level. So, yeah, it's, it's a great recommendation, Monty. Tim Olson says, you guys are totally wrong on the Connor situation. He was misused by guard. I hope Connor transfers to another big school and comes back to haunt guard. Why would you? Again, I get that you don't like guard, but if he comes back to haunt guard, that means he's coming back to haunt Wisconsin. Like, I'm not here for that. Um, and I, but to your first point, Tim, I, like I agree with I agree with that to some degree. We talked about it. I don't I I would have started Connor at the beginning of the year. I talked about that. I thought that was a mistake from the jump. Um, I would have had Klesman come off the bench. I, I don't think guard did the best job of helping Connor this year. Um, conversely, I don't think Connor did the best job of making it easy for guard to find minutes for him. Like I, we live in a society where it's got to be all one or the other at times. And Tim, this is not me ranting against you, by the way. Like I thank you for the comment and, and listen, your perspective is fair. I don't think he was used really well. Um, but he also needed to play better. And we're going to talk about that more coming up. We got more comments on this show talking about the receiver room, gray guard, more on Connor siege in uh, spring practice. A lot more of your comments coming up on today's Lockdown Badgers. But first, a quick break for friends of the show over at FanDuel. FanDuel remains your number one source for all your betting needs. It's the, the, the official sports book of the Lockdown Network. It's what I use for a reason because um, it's fast. It's easy. It's simple. It's um, quick to use. The user interface is incredibly clear. Uh, baseball's coming up. Obviously, college basketball still going on. I've been betting first half um, – the first half lines on every UConn game, and it's been working out incredibly well for me. And that right now, new customers, if you um, you can get two hundred dollars in bonus bets if your five dollar, your first five dollar money line bet wins um, two hundred bucks that you can use on point spreads, money lines, whatever it is. Visit fanduelcom slash locked on and bet on college hoops today. Today's episode is also brought to you by our amazing friends over at eBay Motors, the largest selection of parts you're going to find, the right parts, the right fit, the right prices. They have guaranteed fit to make sure that you get, with over 122 million parts available, that you got to find the right piece, right? It's like building a puzzle, and you got it on the wall, and you need that one perfect piece. Otherwise, your puzzle's not going to work. That's what eBay Motors is here for. Complete your puzzle. Get your ride or die up and running. And with eBay Motors, you're going to be burning – Rubber, not cash. eBay Motors is easy to use. It's simple, fast shipping, and eBay Guarantee Fit makes it incredibly easy. eBay Guarantee Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Go over to eBay Motors, eligible items only, exclusions to apply. eBay Guarantee Fit is only available to U.S. customers. eBayMotors.com. Keep your ride or die alive over at eBayMotors.com. And it's a place I've used to get my parts as well. So whatever you need, 122 million parts, eBayMotors.com. The right parts, the right fit, the right prices. eBay Guarantee Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Okay, let's, let's get some more of your comments here. I want to finish off on this Connor talk because a lot of people were discussing Connor and we were going back and forth on it. Um, this is from Mark. Connor had a good freshman year on a down year for the program. The team improved, but Connor did not. This is like the flip side of it, right? There's a lot of people that are putting this blame squarely on Greg Gard, and I think he played a role. There's also a lot of people that put it squarely on Connor Seijin. I think he played a role. The truth of the matter is Greg Gard, Connor Seijin is not quite as good as his his high wa his high watermark last year, and he's not as bad as we saw this year, right? The truth is somewhere in the middle there. Those two pieces come together, and there's a, a mid-level line there that Connor Seijin is. Connor Seijin is a talented player, and I'm rooting for him. 
Gray guard didn't do him a ton of favors this year, in my opinion. I think the back injury didn't do him a ton of favors this year. He also is a shooter that shot 30% and doesn't play great defense. It It's hard to find that guy minutes, right? So I'm rooting for him to have success. I think he's a talented player. Here, here's, the, here's, the, here's the key, right? Sometimes people just need to move on. Like sometimes you just need to find a new situation or a new scenario to have success. And I think that's where Connor Siegen's at right now. So I, I, I'm I glad he's going to find that wherever it is. I'm, I'm rooting for him. I don't fully put this on gray guard. I, I don't. Connor didn't play well enough this year. And if you, you know, you know how you get more minutes, you play better. You hit more shots. I, and that's exactly where I'm at there. Um, this is from Lord Croy. I can't wait till the day we get to see Harper, Emilio, and Lucas on the field together. I think teams will have a hard time throwing the ball when that day comes. I, so first of all, that trio of dudes, Harper, Emilio, and Lucas, really high-level athletic cornerbacks, defensive backs that the Badgers are bringing in. Um, I think it's fair to point out recruiting never quite works out fully how you anticipate it. Uh, it's like, you know, one of those players is probably not going to work out. One of them might transfer and one of them might become a star. Right. That's just kind of how recruiting works to some degree. But the I think the bigger point is here, this Badger staff has been able to identify and land athletic upgrades and do it in multiple numbers. Right. Not just one guy. If you think back to uh, Paul Chris days, right, um, when Jim Leonard was the defensive coordinator, who are the who are the at really athletic defensive backs this staff was bringing in that you were like you could dream on and say that dude, I don't know if he's going to develop, but if he does, he kind of has some NFL measurables. You have to go back, and it's hard to find a lot of those guys. It's not a knock on a previous regime to point that out, right? They they recruited to a system, and those defenses were really good. But those defenses were also exploited against more vertical, more athletic, more explosive passing attacks for a reason, right? There were a lot of cornerbacks that were technically sound but a little undersized or not quite quick enough. There weren't a lot of NFL measurable guys that they were bringing in. Maybe an Al Ashford, right, who was kind of bigger, faster. Um, major project, though, a Deron Harrell was kind of bigger, faster, again, major project. Caesar Williams was big, but he wasn't very fast. Um, my point is, this staff has done a really good job in a short order of bringing in bigger, more athletic, uh, toolsier, more measurable type cornerbacks. And that's all all these guys. And Lord Crow points it out. You can start to dream on the, the athletic upside of a guy like Jay Harper, Emilio Agard, Xavier Lucas. And then you look forward to this next cycle, bringing in a guy like Remington Moss, uh, you know, Scott, obviously Cody Haddad, who looks like he's mm, Ohio State's really there, but yeah, they're identifying athletic, measurable guys that you can really dream on. I think that's incredibly exciting. I think it's a great point, Lord Croy. Let's keep going here. Um, this is from a Kefo. He said, This is a no brainer decision for Connor. I had opportunity to talk with him for a few times. He's a good kid, nice to people, and personable. I can, I can concur with that. However, he was not good enough in comparison to Store Blackwell. Yeah, I think that's pretty well said, like on, on a lot of levels. The first one is uh, a no-brainer decision for Connor Siegen. Again, I, I'll reiterate, this is what the portal's here for. It's here for players who feel like I can go somewhere else for a better opportunity. I can get more playing time, and I can chase my dream in a spot where I'm getting the, the reps I need to succeed. Like so we've A lot of us have been there professionally, right? Uh, there's a lot of backlash still, I think, at times from fan bases about the portal, about people leaving, about people not being committed. A lot of us have felt this way professionally, where you're in a job and it feels like, for whatever reason, this isn't the best place for me to succeed. This isn't the best place for me to grow as a person, to pursue my future, right? And we all have professionally a version of the transfer portal where we go find a new job. Like, hey, this is my two-week notice, boss. Like, this isn't it for me. I got something else I've got cooking over here. Like, this is what the portal's for. I, I love this part of the portal. Like, I don't want players to be buried and not have a way out. Do you remember, you remember when... Um, Players could graduate, people could first like start transferring and coaches and, and programs could say, you can transfer, but you can't transfer to like this huge list of schools. And it was ridiculous. It was so absurd. Like you can't transfer to Illinois State because in three years we're going to play them. Like, come on. That was that was ridiculous. So I'm not against this. Um, and I think it's a good point. It is kind of a no, it's, it is a no brainer decision for Connor. And by the way, it's probably win-win. I think it helps Wisconsin because it frees up a scholarship. Um Going to the next point, he was not good enough in comparison to Storm Blackwell. He wasn't as good as Storm Blackwell this year. Like, so those guys got more minutes. And one of the consistent themes I've talked about all year was Blackwell. I want Blackwell to get more minutes, right? So there comes a point where the players who are playing better play more. And I'm not, uh, once again, I'm not putting that all on Connor. I'm not putting it all on guard. I think the truth is somewhere in the middle. This team could have used 
last year's version of Connor Siege, and they would, it would have been better if they had that. For whatever reason, it didn't work, and we didn't get that, and Gregard played the people that were playing a little better. I think it's a good comment from Akefo. Uh, Bruce Meyer says, guard can't coach his way out of a paper bag. All right, let's let's go with some guard talk here. First of all, I, Bruce, like, and again, I respect the opinion, but I think that's false. Like, this is a – this is where we tend to stray once again. And just in my opinion, this is only my opinion into a world where it's either guard is really good and we shouldn't talk about his job sets or he's terrible and the worst coach ever. And we're in the program is in a, a fiery hellscape. I, I think the truth is in the middle, which makes it, which is why it's a difficult dis- discussion at times. Like guard can coach guard is not a terrible coach. Like, I mean, just look around the landscape of college basketball. Like, he, he can coach. Um, Michigan just won eight games. Wisconsin won 20 games, and they were a five seed. That's a spot that 60 to 70% of college basketball would, would – that it would be an improvement for them. Um, before anybody yells at me, that's not, that's not perfect, and you lost to James Madison in round one, and you weren't prepared. There's wards here, 100%. But he's not a bad coach. This idea that he's terrible, I just disagree with. Um, he, I think he's a good coach. I actually think he's a good coach. I, I'm starting to worry, and I, I am worried. I don't think he's a great coach necessarily. And then you start talking about, well, do we need to maybe risk some floor to hire for a higher ceiling? I think that's a really interesting discussion, and I'm here for that. I'm here for that discussion. But I have a hard time. People, He's not a terrible coach. I, I'm just saying you don't win 60% of your games if you're a terrible coach. You don't you don't beat Purdue if you're a terrible coach, right? Um, you just don't, in my opinion. Um all right, let's keep going here. This is from, I think, Tom, but the, the name got cut off. When you barely win over half your conference games in basketball, you are not that good. Coaches are there to make sure the players are prepared. If Connor had gaps in his game, where was the coaching? I think that's a valid point. I, listen, I, I think it's valid to wonder why Connor took such a step back from last year. Connor last year was incredible in spurts, right? And he took a step back this year. And it is fair to wonder – if more could have been done to find him easier looks, if uh, rotations could have been adjusted a little bit. I think coaching played a role there. Again, I don't think this was a great coaching job by Greg Hart this year. Uh, I I don't think he managed rotations incredibly well. And part of that, you can see how it reflected in Connor's game. So I think this is a valid point. Um, Greg Hart deserves some criticism for this year, 100%. This is from John Berger, JB. Brooks and McIntosh are going to be dogs. Yeah, JB loves those two. I, I am incredibly excited to see where this receiver room goes, right? Uh, Chris Brooks, Tommy McIntosh, Chris Brooks, sorry, Tommy McIntosh. But you also have the transfer, Tyrell Henry. You got all the players coming back and CJ and Bryson. Um, Tretch is here, Will Pauling. I'm going to try not to get as excited about this receiver room as I did last year when I proclaimed the greatest receiver room we've ever had, question mark. And for the record, I said no to that. But I also posed the question. Um, and I think. Yeah, clearly we got over our over our skis a little bit last year, but I am very excited to see what this receiver room looks like this year because there's a lot of bodies in there that are interesting. Quincy Burroughs is a guy who I can tell you internally the staff has been excited about since they got him over from Cincinnati. That's a big thoroughbred of a receiver. Uh, Chris Brooks brings something physically that not a lot of not a lot of other guys on the roster brings. You imagine throwing kind of a smoke screen out there to a Tretch, to a Pauling, and then having Chris Brooks as the lead blocker. Brooks is going to annihilate a cornerback. I mean, he's going to put him six rows into the stands. Like that's a physical element in the red zone where you can split them out and then use them almost as like a, a jumbo receiver in a blocking situation, right? That's a guy who you can use on crackback blocks, you know, bringing him in motion and cracking on the defensive end. I'm excited to see how they're going to use a guy like that. But there's a lot of bodies in that room. I'm really excited about the receiver room this year. Uh, JB, I think it's a good comment, man. All right, we're going to come up. Uh, a couple more questions, a couple more thoughts, a bunch more in here um, talking about some more on great guards, some more on um, it, the, maybe some pushback to that criticism. Daniel Free take thoughts, all that coming up next on Lockdown Badgers. But first, a quick break for our friends of the show over at Nissan. Uh, this week's March Madness bracket highlight is brought to you by our good friends over at Nissan. And again, I've said this before, I wish we could still talk about Wisconsin in this ad read, but we cannot. So each week we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The Arizona Wildcats can only be described as an armada. The two seed, it's as hardcore as it gets. It's no wonder they've looked as good as they have all season long. 
they're my they're our favorite uh, pick by many to make a run and even get into the final four with their athleticism. Um, they are the Armada because they're fast, quick, exciting. And they are there for that next adventure. So if you are following March Madness, follow the Arizona Wildcats. Also, go check out our friends over at Nissan. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Okay, let's keep going with your comments. Y'all. And, uh, again, I want to say thank you to everybody for tuning in, for watching the show, for submitting comments. I read everything. I really do appreciate it. And I love doing these type of shows because I think we get a little smarter incorporating all the comments and thoughts. Um, this is from TCL. Daniel, free take season. Obviously, Badger commit, be on campus next year. Finished with a state title. 25-1, um, and one, 26 points a game, 7 rebounds, 6 assists. Yeah, that'll play. He's playing next year. Um, yeah. Uh, Daniel, Daniel free take is, is going to find a role next year because he has some size and athleticism that this team, quite frankly, doesn't have. And it's going to have some bumpy spots. He's not the savior. Like, this is not – like, he's not the savior, but he's playing next year because this team needs a boost of athleticism. They need shot making. Uh, and I think he can give you some per- perimeter defense as well if he comes in engaged, ready to go. So I'm really excited to see what he does next year. I think he's going to fill into a rotation. Um, not a starter, right? I think Hepburn and, and Klesman are both going to be back anyway. Blackwell is going to be in that mix. But I, I really look for him to fill kind of a sixth, seventh, man type of a role next season this is from i don't know where who this comes from i apologize he said i agree with justin i can't do this with garden anymore it's time to decide if wisconsin wants to try to be battling with the michigan's or ohio states of the world nationally so i mean michigan won eight games this year i think i know what you're saying though i think you're saying is it time to start battling with the quote-unquote blue bloods which for basketball is more like kentucky duke north carolina so i i'm going to take the michigan point out of that because i i don't I don't think we want to actually be battling with Michigan. They won eight games this year. But I do understand your point. You you want the ceiling to get raised. You want Wisconsin to be battling for the top of the Big Ten with Purdue, um, to be mentioned up in that sense. I do. I, I will say this. I don't know if Greg Gard has that ceiling consistently. I think you could go and find a coach who probably has a higher ceiling, who can recruit better, who is, is maybe probably a little – maybe there's more fluctuations. Maybe the floor is a little lower at times. But – I think you can find probably higher ceiling coach and great guard. This is from Patricia. She said, first of all, yes, it was the referees. They let Jamie have so many fouls that weren't called and the Badgers players couldn't believe it. I thought the refs, I, I said this to Justin. And I don't think I said it on the show. I thought both the referees and the Badgers were taken off guard by how physical Jamie was. Jamie, I, I want to be super clear. This is on, I'm not putting that loss on the, on the referees, but I thought they lost control of the game in the early portion of it. And there was a lot of off ball movement usually cuts, things like that. Uh, JMU was super handsy. He was almost tackling people at times. So, yeah, I thought they got away with stuff, but uh, listen, credit to them. They won the game, and they came on physical, and they dared the referees to call it, and I thought the referees were a little taken aback, honestly. So, yeah, I, I mean, I agree with you, Patricia. The referees weren't good in that game, but Wisconsin didn't didn't bring it either. Uh, this is from P. He said, I hate, I hate to break it to people, but guards offense requires excellent low post scoring bigs to be successful. The only time they really had a competitive team is with Potter, Nigel Hayes, Hap. I think this is actually a great point that Pete brings up. Guard, and this comes from Bo Ryan, who always emphasized the shot we want to get is that two-foot post shot. That's what we're we're consistently working towards. Now, analytically, that's not the most efficient shot you can hunt. There's a reason a lot of teams have gone away from post-centric offenses, both at the NBA level and the college level. It's because from an efficiency standpoint, the three pointer at times makes a lot more sense. Um, and a contested post shot's hard. Like you, you end up with a lot of empty possessions because if you're taking contested post shots, your rebounder or your shooter is also being boxed out essentially. So not only are you kind of taking contested at times inefficient shots, but you're not setting yourself up at times for a great offensive rebounding opportunity either. So there's a reason offenses have moved away from that, but this is a great point that if that's going to be the central part of our offense, you got to find a better post offensive player. And as much as I've defended Stephen Crowell at times, he's not consistently good at that because there's too many matchups where he gets taken out of it. So what does that mean going forward? Well, if great guard is still the coach through the portal and especially with wall going on, who is another post player, can he find a guy to run that post offense through more, more effectively, more consistently? And it would have to be at the four, right? Because Crowell's going to be back. So I think this is an excellent point, actually, that doesn't get discussed enough. And I appreciate you bringing it up. Okay, let's keep going here. Um, this is in response to my JMU comment that they're not even that good. 
and I, to be fair, I that probably came off too harsh. But uh, Ethan Polanski says, comical how you lead off. They're not even that good. Simply put, that's an emotional statement. You mentioned briefly giving credit, uh, but you didn't. JMU is a 32-win team, blah, 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 blah. Uh, JMU got dismantled by Duke. I still kind of stand by my statement that JMU is in some buzzsaw juggernaut that the Badgers couldn't handle. I stand by my statement that the Badgers didn't play well enough and they weren't ready for it. I, JMU's fine. They're fine. Duke took them to the woodshed, and this is not like a great Duke team. So I, I'm not trying to be dismissive. I sound like a jerk doing this. JMU deserved to beat Wisconsin. They're further the better program um, this year, but I still don't think they're that great. I think Wisconsin was a mess in that game. Let's see. Um, any more comments here? This is from Tim P. Going back to TJ um, Olterberg. He said, my prediction is McIntosh is dealing to get TJ, but waiting for Iowa State to finish in the tournament. He went on to say it's based on no inside intel, but I don't see it, man. I, I don't think McIntosh is, is firing Greg Gard this offseason. I, I truthfully don't. Um, here's a, We'll finish maybe with this one. Uh, there's only one thing to discuss here, Gard's job status, potential replacements, and what Mac is going to do about it. The basketball program is in shambles, likely mass, mass exodus of players, and a fan base screaming for coaching change. And you guys are talking about football depth chart in March. This is why I stopped listening to this show. That's from Ryan. A fellow Ryan. I'm catching strays. Not even strays. That's a bullet. Um, let me start with your first point here. The basketball program is in shambles. It's not. Again, this is, this is where I feel like the narrative gets lost a little bit. This program just won 20-something games, and they were a five seed. People may get sick of me hearing that. But when I see comments like the basketball program is in shambles, I like to point out that getting a fifth seed in March Madness is not in shambles. That's not shambles. Michigan just won eight games. That's shambles. I, I mean, I, there's a level of spoiled fandom here if, if you think that is shambles. Now, you can – absolutely have the conversation that we are not where we should be and this is not good enough and therefore I want to change in leadership. I think that's a very fair perspective. I'm not going to tell anyone to think I just disagree very, very passionately that this program is in shambles. I think that's a over exaggeration. Uh, likely mass exodus of players. I don't think it'll happen. Uh, of course, nothing really shocks me in the portal era. Like if if some guys leave that I don't expect, it's not going to shock me. And I think we all need to be the point where nothing really shocks us anymore anywhere in the portal era, right? So I don't think Hepburn will go. But if some team comes in and says X, Y, and Z, you never know. You never know. And on that point, you could be correct. Um, Ryan, you absolutely could be correct. In terms of the second point, um, this is why I stopped listening to the show. I guess, I don't know. I'm sorry. Like, uh, I guess you listen one more time to leave a comment at least, right? Okay, let's keep going here. Um, I think that's about all the comments that I had up here. Again, I didn't get to all of them, and I, I apologize, but I appreciate everybody who listens. You guys are amazing. Guys and girls are amazing. Thank you so much uh, for helping support the community. We got a bunch more content coming up, as always. Should have another 2025 recruit on the show this week, plus more football. Obviously, basketball transfer portals going on. Brian Smith should be coming up this week. So a lot of content, as always. Really do appreciate everybody on Wisconsin, and we'll talk later.